Dale Bouvet, uh, what can you say about tonight's game? You've been involved in this a, a long time. You know, uh, like we said uh, when Kaylee was in here, a lot of weird, uh, you know, put out numbers on the old scorebook tonight. Uh, six, five, three double plays. Eight to uh, nine to six two put of out. Those, right, two of those. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and now and, and an eight to two to end it. Uh, yeah. Just another night at the softball. Game. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's maybe as good a defensive game as a Monroe softball team has played, especially in a you know a crucial situation or a big game type thing. And uh, you know our outfielders were fantastic starting early in the game. Chandra made a nice play on uh, Krieger's uh, first play. I think it was hit to the warning track and. Um, you know, Ellie made some good plays early, and uh, it just it just kept on going. And uh, you have Kaylee and Sarah Klepping gets overlooked too because she had those two, like you said, six five three double plays that were perfect throws and perfect throws because you know the plays were right there, bang bang, and uh, the calls were made, and and uh, we made the plays. Uh, defense has been a kind of a little crutch for us at times this year. We haven't always made those kinds of plays, and, um, and even though that I know we have the skill to do it, um, you know, I don't know if it's a growing process or you know. Uh, just one of those nights where we just clicked and had it all together. But uh, there were, were like, like you said, I'm, I'm sure on the radio, there were several plays, game-saving plays that we made. Uh, uh, in, in high school softball, you don't see, you see them every once in a while, but mm -hmm. to see three, four, five of them, you know, in, in one game is is pretty outstanding by our kids' part. And you know, maybe the one Craigo made uh, earlier on against uh, what Krieger was barreling down on her, and to hold on to that uh, is, is a pretty remarkable play. I, I give Kaylee a lot of credit. She had kind of a tough day at the plate, but. Uh, she uh, she did a nice job in those two situations, certainly. Well, and we'll get to, to that in a second. But uh, you know, a lot of people watching this game, and I, I tend, you know, to let coaches coach. But you know, after about two or three of the uh, base running, you know, challenges that Portage gave you, I wondered why in the 11th and 12th they continued to do it. Now Mills says that uh, you know you make the other team play, you know, make yeah. a play on you, and and he continued to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Would you have done the same thing in that position? I, you know, in, in a lot of ways, yes, I might be a little bit more conservative than he is uh, in, in some ways, but, uh, you know, the, I'm, I'm sure they had more hits than us, you know, maybe twice as many hits as us. Uh, we just were not very good offensively tonight, uh, discipline-wise, and just couldn't stay back ahead of everything early again, and, and their pitcher did a nice job. Early on, we got some walks, and then, of course, late, we got the walks, but um, in between, they were ahead a lot, first pitch strikes, and... Uh, you know, we just could never really generate anything and never put anything together. Uh, you know, we had some chances in you know, like the second, third, fourth inning. I think we had some base runners and things, and just could never get that big hit. Uh, but yeah, I, I, you know, I still think the name of the game in high school softball is you want to you want to force some things sometimes and try to make the other team make some plays, and uh, they did that and give us credit for making them. Yeah, and we made. Them. We made him, and uh, I'm not sure I would second guess you know much of anything that he did. I, I certainly wouldn't. Uh, uh, you know, you, you're trying to make the other team make plays, and uh, um, it's not like they made any glaring ones. I'm sending that kid on the last play of the game. She's scoring. You know, base clean base hit up the middle. We're gonna try to tie the game and make them throw us out, and and it turned out that we we did throw her out on a great throw from uh, Casey uh, in center field, and uh, she certainly had a nice postseason for us. Yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Crago uh, block of the plate in the seventh inning, I mean, I don't know if you've got a good angle of that on a highlight video anywhere, but that'll well, be All I know is she ended up on her backside and uh, yeah. still had the ball, and uh, I was the first one out there to give her a little pat on the back and a little hug because uh, that was an awesome play, and then she does it you know, basically again later in the game. The second one was a little bit easier because she had some time to, to catch it, but that first one was bang, bang. The kid's right there, and you know, a lot of catchers, uh, especially maybe some that are smaller in stature with somebody like that barreling, mm -hmm. barreling down on them are, are not going to make that play, and uh, uh, she's certainly part of the reason that we're moving on. In 12 innings out of your pitcher, you didn't have the luxury of going to the pen, and she looked to labor in, in the 11th, I thought, and, and again in the 12th, but uh, you got out of the game, and now you got a couple days rest before the sectional final, and, and that's where I thought that Becca a year ago learned a big lesson against Fort Atkinson, and now she gets to show us how far she's come. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, I've seen her better. I've seen her better, but uh, she competed and uh, made some big pitches at times, and uh, you know, I, I think the decisions we made on Krieger was sound uh, today, and we had practice intentional walks, and uh, we were going to try to make sure that that one kid uh, didn't beat us, and uh, uh, you know, we walked her, I think, three times, two intentionally, and one on a, you know, we pitched, kind of pitched around her. Mm -hmm. And we did, got her out about three times, if I remember right, too. I think we got her out three times, yep. too. Um, so, you know, that part of our strategy worked. And uh, uh, Becca's certainly becoming a little bit, a lot more mentally tough 
uh, and, and that bodes well for us in the sectional final because obviously she did unravel a little bit a year ago as a freshman and um, she, need, she understands that and, and she's come a long way and uh, has improved a lot for us uh, you know since we took that we got abused by Fort Atkinson that one time eight to one mm -hmm. she's you know she, we had a little bit of conversation. We said we have to pick this up and we have to, you know, throw the ball a little harder and hit our spots a little bit better. And ever since then, and we haven't won them all, but but she's been markedly improved. And uh, I, I think we'll see even a better Becca Armstrong on Friday night. I hope so. 4.30 against uh, Edgerton at Evansville. Anything you can tell us about the Crimson Tide that the fans out in Monroe should know? Yeah, we uh, they're good. They're solid. They're very athletic. Uh, you know, I haven't gotten this complete scouting report. Uh, our JV coach was out there tonight and uh, will give us the lowdown tomorrow. And... Uh, you know, they were ranked number one in, in D2 for a while and uh, only have two losses, so it's not going to get easy. We're going to have to beat three state-ranked teams in a row here after uh, in the regional final, sectional semifinal, and then the sectional final. We're going to have to beat three state-ranked teams in a row to get there. And uh, well, We have our chance. We, we had them a couple years ago and I think 07 and, uh, and beat them in a close game. And, uh, and hopefully we can find a way. We're going to have to pick it up a little bit on offense, but hopefully we can find a way. Play defense like that and, and pitch a little bit better and scratch out a few more runs than we did today, and, and I like our chances.